do you have a system for organising your embroidery threads? It's pretty inevitable that the longer you cross stitch, the more thread stash that you'll build up. And it's really helpful to have a way to organise that. And of course, there are lots of potential options for organising your threads. And that's not what this video is going to be about today. Today, I just want to dive into the one method that I use, and that's floss drops. That's these little things. Hi everyone, I'm Kat from Catkin and Lily, bringing you the best tips, tricks and tutorials so you can get the most joy from your cross stitching. So I've had quite a lot of questions about the floss drops, how I use them, how I organise them and how I use them for projects. So I thought I'd talk a bit more about that today. But first, I'm going to have to address one thing and that's because I'm British, I would call this thread. But I do call these floss drops. And that's because I think that thread drops is it's actually quite awkward to say and just doesn't sound quite as good. So I'm afraid you're going to get a little bit of a crazy mix of thread and floss drops. Okay, now that's out of the way, let's start with what are floss drops and how do you use them? Okay, so we're going to look at what floss drops are. So very simply, floss drops are card or plastic tabs that you can put your embroidery threads onto. So these are the ones I like to use. They usually have two holes, one for the thread and one for storage, which you'll see more of later. You can buy these in all different sizes and shapes, or you can even make your own. So these ones that I use are called Annie's Keepers. And if you specifically want to look for these, then I'll pop a link in the description to the shop in the UK that I buy them from. They do ship worldwide, or you may be able to find somewhere in your country to buy them. But as I said, there are lots of other options too. In fact, I recently bought these ones from Kate Blandford. And again, I'll put the link in the show notes because I really wanted to try them out as they looked particularly awesome. I very much like pretty and practical and these definitely fit the bill. I mean, they're pink for a start, so that's great. They've got a large hole, same as these ones for your embroidery thread, but they also have a small hole for any working thread, the hole at the top for storage, and they've also got a nifty little slot on the side for you to put your thread label in. So really well designed. Now, most floss drops don't have a label slot like these ones, but instead there's usually space for you to add a label so that you can put the thread brand and color code on there. Now, I've got these really beautiful labels. These ones here from Sirius Stitches, which is in the US, and I'll link to those in the description. So there's a lot of pretty labels out there, but you can also just put a blank sticker on and write the number. So that's what I did with these ones before I treated myself to extra special ones. And I'm still switching over, in fact. Just be careful what sort of sticker you use because these ones are the round stickers that came with the Annie's Keepers um, and they're permanent adhesive. So if you use something like this and you ever want to change the labels, it can be a little bit difficult. What you can use is something like this, which these, I would have to cut these ones down because they're a bit big, but you could get smaller ones. And these are reusable labels, so they come on and off really easily. And if you're curious what the little number is underneath here in pink on the old one, then that's actually to show me where the thread hangs on my pegboard. And on the newer ones, it's on the back, but more on that later. So why do I love using floss drops? Well, I find them very practical to work with, both for storing them and using in projects. They don't make my thread all kinky, like it does if you store your thread on bobbins. And I just like how they look. So let's talk about how you can use floss drops. So obviously to use floss drops, you're going to need to cut your thread into lengths and loop it through the large hole. Now, this is a good little time saver because you can cut all your threads to your preferred length all in one go, and then they're ready to use. If you want some tips on how long is a good length to use, then take a look at the video I made all about that. I'll link it in a card and in the description. Now I cut my threads to one meter lengths. So I'll get eight from a single skein. So let me show you how I do that. Okay, so I need to unravel the whole of my skein so that I can cut it into eight equal lengths. Now if pulling thread from a skein without it tangling is something that you find tricky, then I do have a video on that. So you might like to check that one out. But of course the main tip is I'm gonna be pulling from the end of the thread that's got the numbered paper band on it. And I actually like to slide that up a little bit so it's up close to the other one. And then I'm gonna take the end 
I'm going to start pulling it and I'm going to place that end on my shoulder so I know where it is. Then I'm just going to pull, continue to pull, and I'm just holding the skein by the top loops. And it is a little easier to do this standing up, but you can do it sitting down as well. And I'm watching as I get close to the end, I'll just slide off those little paper bits and make sure that that's all unwound. So I've got that end, I've got the end I popped on my shoulder and I can place those two ends together. So now I'm going to fold this entirely in half. Now as I run it through my fingers, what I like to do is to make sure that I've kind of got the two strands separated slightly, I've clamped them through my fingers. So I've got one strand either side of my bottom two fingers and then I'm clamping that in place with my top two fingers and my thumb. Now, of course, this isn't essential, but I find it gives you an early warning if you're going to get any tangly bits like this. Just makes it a little bit easier not to run into any massive tangles. Once I've folded that in half, I'm going to put my two ends together with the loop and fold it in half again. So exactly the same. Again, I've got my fingers through the threads and I've now folded that in half again. So again, put those ends together and this time it's just easy enough to fold that in half. And then I will just snip. I've got the loops here and I can put my scissors right the way through and snip that and snip the other ends there. And I've got eight nice one meter lengths. So once I have my skein cut into eight equal pieces, I'm going to take the two loose ends, put those together, and I've got the loop at this end. And then I'm going to push that through the hole, put that over the top and pull it through so that that's looped onto there. Now, if I remember, what I sometimes do if I'm about to work with this thread is that I might put only seven of the pieces through here and leave one to the side and just attach that on there so that I've got my bit of working thread ready to go. Now there's an extra stage you can do here and it's something I'm experimenting with which is to plait the main bundle of threads. So I've done this here and I've done it by using the hole at the top to hang that up somewhere and then I can plait the thread. But you can also do it by just taping it down. So simply tape that down, split your threads into three sections, and then just loosely plait it. Now, as I said, I'm still experimenting, so still finding out what might be the best sort of tension to have in these. I suspect quite loose is a good thing, which is quite hard for me because I usually like to plait quite tightly. So you're just going to continue plaiting that all the way down to the bottom and then at the bottom I just tied a little piece of embroidery thread around it just to keep it all together. So now to work with the floss drops you have two options. You can actually work directly from the bundle of threads or you can remove a single thread and have that as your working thread. So for this non plaited version I could take all of these threads off of here, separate one out, put the rest back on the floss drop and put the single thread next to it here and use that as my working thread. But you can actually pull a thread directly out from the bundle by finding one like this. So I've looked for the loops of threads here, grabbed hold of one and then I'm going to pull it. This will bunch up a bit here, but you can straighten that back out. And I've got one strand or one thread left here. And then I can use that as my working thread. So I would then put that as my working thread on the side here. So I would then work from this one. Now, if you've got plaited threads, then you can't unplait them each time, 
you could, but that would be quite time consuming. So really looking for the one thread and pulling it out is really the only way that you can get one thread out of this. And you can pull it again. Now, because it's plaited, it does bunch up a bit more, but if you pull one side at a time, you can still get that one thread out and the rest of your plait is now still absolutely fine. And again, I've got my, my one thread out. So now we come to getting to a single strand to work with. So you can just use this working thread, take that off of here, separate one strand, pull that strand out, and there's my single strand. And then I can put the rest of this back onto here. And if I know I'm going to need a few strands of this color, then I'll probably pull a few out and put them all back individually on here so that they're ready to go. But you can also use the direct pulling method to get single strands out as well. Exactly like we did earlier to take that one thread out, you can actually use the same method to take one strand out. And you can do that directly from here so you never even separate this out, or you can separate a working thread and use that. So from the whole bundle, this time instead of looking for one whole thread, you're going to use your needle to pick out just one strand. And then pull that one strand out. Now, this will show you why I don't always love doing this. Sometimes it can get quite tangly and it can make the rest of your bundle here get a little bit tangly. See, it's gone, gone a little bit tangly there. And the other reason is that this thread is now really curly because it's a bit like you've run a ribbon through a pair of scissors and it's got really curly. So I have to admit, I don't always love doing this, but you can do it if you like. And it works better when you've got shorter lengths of thread. Having one meter lengths on here, it doesn't work quite as well. And as I said, you can do it from that main bundle, but you can do it from here as well. So again, you would go into, this loop of threads and separate out one strand. And here's another reason I'm not so keen because sometimes when you're trying to search for that one strand of thread, it can actually be, you can sort of mess the threads up a bit with your needle. But anyway, once you've got your one strand, you can pull that all the way out. And it's a little bit less curly than that first one that I pulled out because it's only come out of this working thread. So if I was going to do it, I would probably do it from a working thread rather than the whole bundle of threads. And of course you can do the same with your plaited thread. I've got my working thread on the side here, so that would be exactly as I've just shown you. But if I want to do it from the bundle of threads, again, I'm going to turn it over. So I'm looking at the loops, pop my needle in, to find one, one single loop and then pull that. Again, it's gonna get really tangly. So you're gonna have to go back to pulling one side at a time. And again, I've got a, a, a fairly curly thread left at the end. Now, of course, if you put all your threads on floss drops, then you'll need a way to store those floss drops. And I store mine on a pegboard on the wall, somewhere that doesn't ever get any sunlight on it. But there are other ways that you could store these. I've seen some people store them in filing cabinet drawers or in hangers or in plastic bags. And Annie's Keepers even make these slides that you can actually use. You can slide these on. So you can slide a whole load of these on here and then you could store these in a filing cabinet. Which brings me on to using them for projects. And as you've probably guessed, my preference is to put them on a binder ring. I take all the colours that I need for a project off of my pegboard, pop them on a binder ring and then I'm good to go. I also find if you put them in the order that they are on your pattern, 
So you can see this matches the order that they are on here. I haven't got these ones on here. Then that makes it easier to find the right one. Now you could even add another label to your floss tops if you don't have anything on, on the back or even in this space on the, on the back of this label here. I could put the symbol on the back of there and I would do that either with a removable label or with a pencil so that you can rub that out and change it between projects. Now, if you're a multi-whip stitcher, so you have multiple projects on the go, and I certainly am, then you might find you need the same colour in more than one project. So in this case, I just keep a stash of blank floss drops. I'll decant some thread from one to the other, pop a temporary label on it, and then I can use it in multiple projects. Now, I've been asked if the threads get really tangly when working with them like this in long lengths and on the binder ring and a little bit on occasion. But it's quite easy to keep them fairly neat. I try to make sure when I flip to the colour that I want that I make sure that the threads are all untangled. I haven't made any tangles while I'm flipping that, that round and then I can get to the colour that I want. So again, if I now want to go to the yellow one, flip that round, just make sure that it hasn't got tangled. You can also find that the ends of here just get a wee bit tatty, but that bit will be buried under stitching or cut off at the end, so it isn't a problem. And they've never got tatty enough that it causes me any problem threading my needle. So again, not something that I worry about. One problem you might have is if you have a cat that thinks these threads are a fun toy and likes to bat at them and chase them. We don't have any pets, but we do get visits from our neighbour's cat quite often. And I can see her eyeing them up occasionally, but she's actually very good at not going for them. I just try not to wave them around too wildly in front of her. And when I'm finished with the project, I just have to find the right spot to pop the threads back on my board. This is the bit I'm really bad at. And sometimes I get as far as taking this binder ring and taking it to my pegboard, popping it on an empty hook, forgetting about it, and then wondering why I can't find the thread I need the next time round. So I hope you found that interesting to see how I work with floss drops. And if there's anything I haven't answered for you, then please do just ask away in the comments. Otherwise, all that's left for me to do is to say if you enjoyed this video, please give it a like and make sure to subscribe so you don't miss any more stitchy videos on the way. Thank you so much for watching and happy stitching.